Bright price is a tradition, but it is a violence to men. I can say violence to men. I'm called Fobete Nuela Lu. I'm from Bafut. I was growing up every day. My father keeps telling me, Nuela, your bride price is four million, whether you like it or not. And I'm like, Dazi, please help me and look for a man that will pay four million because I don't know if anybody or any man out there is ready to pay four million for a bride price. They are not his daughter. I'm from Zeng, that is my village. And I'm married. I'm a teacher by profession. I'm married. I'm a teacher by profession. I would say bright price is simply the payment of certain goods as well as finances to the family of the woman in which a man intends to get married to. Bafood has three stages for the traditional ceremony. We have the Nobdo, the first visit to create awareness They'll give you a day, you bring a palm wine for the knock door ceremony actually, where they'll invite some relatives to come. And they'll make the relatives know that they have a guest, that is, and they'll make their intention known to them. And after that, they'll go to their houses, and the father and the relatives will come out with the list. They'll give the groom to be the list, they'll go through it and come back with feedback. They will decide if they want to provide all the articles on the same day or they will need uh, extra negotiation, cases where the groom is not financially stable. Yeah. My Christian name is Winifred and I am married to a Muslim called Ishaga. So I'm having a mixed family as I can say, yeah, concerning religion. According to the Muslim or the Christian tradition, before you can perform any church wedding as I call it, they will always ask you, have you paid the bride price of your wife? But to the Muslim uh, on religion tradition is maybe, I can call it in a lesser part, they don't really consider it too much like the Christians. For the Muslims, if you are accepted to get married to a certain family and your family says yes, it's okay, you people can go ahead. You must not pay the bride price according to the Muslims' religion because Muslims, they believe that any time the marriage is not going, divorce can just set in at any moment. But Christians, with their saying, for better, for worse, sometimes you must pay the bride price before a reverend can accept to do a wedding for both of you. And according to our tradition in Saul, for you to be a legal wife to somebody, and then somebody is called a legal husband in a certain family, you must pay a bride price. My husband did not pay my bride price because I said earlier that he's from a Muslim background. For them, they don't consider it so very important. But to my opinion too, we agree, both of us, that my bride price will be paid later after we have settled down and we had reasons for that. But it's not really easy for parents to give out their children that way with minimal bride price because they believe that it's only at the level of the bride price that they get to eat something from the child. That old tradition of if you don't eat something from me you on your bride price, when you get married, the man will take you and go away. What if he takes you to America, to another country? You don't ever get to hear from you. So they want to make full use of that opportunity. They exploit the man, especially when they just have the idea that the man is wealthy or financially stable. All the uncles will start coming up with lists. Give me this, give me that, give me that, give me that. And if you don't do it, they'll say, they'll say you have bad luck or they'll Play, place curses on you, which is not correct. One of the reasons why he did not want to pay the bride price immediately was, we were looking at when you are getting married to somebody, is the person you love, but not the person you grew with. 
or the person they deliver you with is the person you found that you love and it's not their relative we thought it together that maybe this our love or with human circumstances our behaviors may not match in future and in the soul tradition when you pay the bride price it's once and for all even if i divorce from him i will not have another opportunity for another man to get married to me because he already paid the bride price and i remain his wife and only wife because in our own tradition they say one woman is equal to one man so you don't get married to two people if your first husband pay your bride price and your behaviors cannot match after two or three months and divorce set in you will never have any opportunity to get married to another man because your family already gave you to that family and it is usually once and for all that was one of the reasons well i'm expecting that the man who i'm going to get married to is going to pay my dowry at least he should be financially stable because i cannot get married to a man that does not have money i cannot lie i cannot get married to somebody that is not i'm not saying that the person should really be rich but the person should be encouraging should provide our basic needs shelter food and education for the children at least you need to be somewhere some of the people feel that the husband i'm married to just want to use me but some people who understand the meaning of marriage that it means love coming to be together try to help each other to do other things together maybe raise a family they will know that i'm really married too but other people who are interested with the things of the bride price i can say money and material things they are they would rather not recognize my husband as a very important person in the society or in my family because he brought nothing and he has taken somebody to go and enjoy that is the interpretation of it but with my social part and other things for me i feel free but i don't care what other people are talking about but with time he will pay it i did not share the other reason when we got married he did not have the means to pay all those things because i'm the first girl in our family and our tradition says when you are the first girl they pay your bride price to your mother's own family and they will pay the same thing that your father paid on your mother so we went round and it was too heavy for him he was not yet like working or he has not yet invested a lot to have much money to go and pay just the same like my father paid for my mother so but i could not wait until he would raise money before he would come and pay my bride price since i was ready for marriage and i saw that he too loved me and need me we got married when the time will come when he will be able to he will go and pay the bride price because the family still remains the family the bible says man shall leave his father and go and cleanse with his wife so if the man's responsibility from god you were born that way you were made that way so you have to reward the people for taking care of your property because when you get married to your husband you just go some people go and never come back the other day my mother was nella do you know that i will never go back to our company if i die they'll bury me in nico that means i don't have any link again in jinibi i was like madam brother all of us have the same fate according to me tradition is very important and our culture is really really important we should try to preserve our culture but we should not use our culture to exploit people or men coming to get married to our children bride price is a tradition but it is a violence to men i can say violence to men it's just a culture it's not violent because uh people do their things according to their traditions and so man does like in so man then there's uh, other tribes they do this yes, according to their tradition which to me is not violent because it, to me is just bringing the two parties together bright price should just be something symbolic as per the cultural aspect not exploitation 
you can just give a minimal amount of 150,000 or 200,000, not some people exaggerating to 600,000, 650,000, and least amounts close to a million, which is not correct. Men, they don't come from the same families where they ask them the bride price. They know hopefully that I will pay a bride price before I get married to the wife. And the funniest thing is that it varies from family to family. You can admire a girl that you really want to get married to. The girl really shows some love and interest for you. And you go to that particular family and they, are go they will tell you that for you to pay the bride price of this girl, you are going to buy a bundle of zinc, 40 liters of palm oil, one bag of salt, and then you have to give the, uh, this amount of money to these other uncles and their aunts and then on the day you are coming you, you have to give money so that they prepare food to entertain these people just imagine you are just a young boy in a small provision store that you are managing maybe for 200,000 and then just the bright price of your wife alone is costing 300 and something thousand or 400,000 how do you really see it is it not violence and then for the bride price, sometimes when you pay it, it is not finished on one day. Anything happening in that family, you go like an in-law. And you have an amount of something that you must give or you must pay. So for me, I say that bride price is really violence to men. And then the effects sometimes fall on women. And women are negatively affected after paying their bride price. In other regions, you realize that most of their women, they have that anxiety. They are willing to get married, but they will not get married because the men wanting to get married to them cannot meet with the demands of some of those villages. That is where we tend to say that some of the villages tend to sell out their women to people. And for that reason, you see a number of them staying back at home without getting married because the husband might have the will or the zeal to get married to a woman, but the finances is not there. And in such cases, that's when you have men who tend to maltreat their women when it comes to giving more than what they had. So they turn their women's back at, at home to be their punching bags. <laughs> women go so, uh, through some stress in their marital life due to this payment of the bride price. Why am I saying so? If you get married to your husband and he takes all what we call capital of life and pay your bride price to have you, imagine you a woman, you are just a housewife. How do you expect of that man to live with you? He has already paid the bride price, he's now a legal husband of yours, but he took all what he has, like his income, and paid for your bride price. The family suffers. He's unable to pay his rent. He's unable to fed for the family because all what he was keeping for the family has been paid for the bride price. And sometimes there are a lot of problems every day because he cannot make up with his needs and the wife's uh, needs too. Secondly, if your bride price is paid and sometimes death is natural, you don't know what can happen. So you get married after two years, if you are getting married at the age of 18. So after two years, your husband is dead. And you don't have that opportunity to get married to another man legally, so that he too can come and pay your bride price. How do you continue your social life? The man lives his life and he's dead. You are a widow at the age of 20, a young girl. Do you expect that young girl to live until, if God permits him to stay till 60 or 70, to live without a man because his, her bride price was already paid? There is another thing. You are married and then your bride price is paid. Any little thing you do like maybe a mistake of life, the husband says, do you know how much money I've spent on you? Any little problem when you go back home that please the family come and look at this thing somebody will tell you that it is my wife I already paid for you so I don't think your family can come to intervene in my affairs so each day each time women are always stressful because of these things for me to my own opinion I could have preferred that 
when two people get married, they can decide for themselves which year they would like to pay the bride price. And both of them can raise money and pay the bride price if it is a tradition and it must hold. Not that a man should come and pay a bride price for the wife. Because it is sometimes like you are going to buy somebody to come and do a particular thing for you. But when you go into married life, it is not like that. It's very difficult doing traditional weddings because you have so many people to settle. In Bafut, for example, my husband-to-be has to say to my aunt, that's the sisters of my mother, buy them plantain, red oils, and other stuff. You have to say to my grandmother. And after that, you need to say to my father's brothers, and they're about 30. So I don't know how we did, but when you come, we'll see how we'll do things. Yes, but... Uh, for me, if they ask my opinion, I will advise, but... I may not go against the tradition. What should matter in every union should be love and not money, just little amount of money. I don't want to say no money because money is important. Our daily needs, we need shelter, we need food, we need basic things. So I will not say that love, meanwhile there are no basic things. So more money and much love, greater love. Bride price is actually very important as an African, but the grooms or the husband should be to be should not be exploited by the parents of the bride.